I'm Brian. This is Greg uh, with Gilmore Data Recovery. Just want to talk real briefly about RAID 0 data recovery. Um, Greg, what's a RAID 0? RAID 0 uh, is basically a way of combining anywhere between two or more disks to look like one physical disk um, to the operating system. And so it's a way of basically spreading the data across disks to optimize performance um, at the price of slightly reduced um, reliability. Yeah, and that's why you're watching this video, is probably because you've been a victim of reduced reliability. Uh, RAID, the acronym, is stands for uh, Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks or Independent Disks. Um, the word R for redundant is something that with RAID 0 you get 0 of. Mm -hmm. So it's, in my opinion, RAID 0 shouldn't even be called a RAID, you should come up with something else for it. But um, it's not super recommended, but it is blazing fast, and you will find it commonly. And even in business systems that people would not anticipate people setting up. But I, I think there's a reason for it, and it's usually because it sounds better to sell a 4-terabyte NAS device than a 2-terabyte NAS device. Mm -hmm. uh, people like bigger numbers. People like more storage. And uh, sometimes you have an access to those 2-terabyte drives laying around. How are we going to make 4-terabyte NASs? Yeah, RAID 0 will get mm -hmm. you there. Um, so anyways, the way it kind of works real briefly is... Uh, we have two disks here, and these are the kind of positions on the disks, and these positions are what we call stripes. What's a common stripe size, Greg? Anywhere between 64 kilobytes to 512 kilobytes. So each one of these is, you know, so this is position 0, and this is position 64K and 128K uh, on individual disks. And then there's a RAID controller that's usually a piece of hardware, but it can be a piece of software that sits here and tells the operating system, hey, here's four terabytes. And the way it does it is block one's going to be here, block two's going to be here, block three's going to be here, block four is going to be here in kind of perpetuity. And as far as what happens when a disk goes bad is we're left with half the blocks, which, you know, this video that we're shooting is probably going to be hundreds of megabytes big and we would have half of the blocks for it and that video would not function at all. It's not like you just have the front half or the back half of the video. You would have every other 64 kilobytes, which for most data types is absolutely worthless. Yeah, so, so when you have half your files, you don't have half the files, you have half of all the files and half of all the file definitions and that sucks. So the most common thing we see with RAID 0 recoveries is this specific scenario where we basically have to, in the data recovery lab, do a hard drive repair or an SSD repair to resurrect this thing so that we can restore the striping pattern. If we can't get this done, you're, you're basically going to have a worthless recovery. And in this case, with Gilware, it would be financially risk-free. So if this drive came in, uh, what we call powdered, because the platters just had all the data scratched off, we would fail, not compound your misery with any fees. but um, when we succeed in resurrecting this thing because the next question everybody has is okay great you know what is this going to cost me and what are the odds of recovery well the odds of recovery are going to be tied to the health of the platters they're usually okay so the odds of a successful recovery we probably bat 95 percent somewhere in that neighborhood even if there's small amounts of platter damage we can usually kind of buff that out with the burnisher and recover a lot of the data uh, so the odds are usually pretty good um, Cost-wise, we're usually not looking at too much complexity or too much computer scientist time to figure out this pattern. I mean, how long does it typically take one of your subordinates to figure out the stripe size and the pattern? For I would guess these? anywhere between 15 minutes to a half an hour. Um, it yeah. depends on the type of uh, type of data and the file system it was used as well because you're basically tracing through the data and trying to find these breaks and then trying to basically figure out when the data switches to the other drive and for how long or how big the stripe size is. And then of course the ordering of the drive. So uh, things like pictures are pretty good at doing that because you get the f part of the picture, then you can slice in the next sort of few lines and the next sort of few lines, and the next sort of few lines that go down like that. That's helpful. Any sort of sequential data like a dictionary file um, or something like that that just has a bunch of words in order, you can use um, to figure out the order and the stripe size. Yeah, so again, where pricing comes from, at least at Gilware, is based, there's a couple factors. One is what is it going to cost to repair this drive? So if, if the drive is a 
you know, consumer grade drive where the parts are super common and it's like five years old. So we see them a lot. Um, and the replacement parts that we would need are not particularly expensive. That drive repair, you know, it might be $800 to $1,500. And then the time for the raid specialist, again, it might be less than an hour. So you might be looking at less than two or three hundred dollars total for the for the consult with the raid specialist and then a normal amount of time for quality assurance data testing extraction quality assurance and all those types of things so you know long story short you know kind of a common scenario for a, for a raid zero recovery probably two thousand to three thousand dollars in total is probably a for normal two drive system or? for a two drive system mm -hmm. yeah i mean certainly we do see four drive systems eight drive systems it's going to change the complexity a little bit, uh, but it, you know, a four drive RAID zero system, uh, usually only one drive is going to be bad. Because again, RAID zero, uh, it's the least reliable. You lose any of the drives, you lose access to all your data. There is zero redundancy, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, so we don't commonly see that there's two drives dead or four drives dead. I mean, unless you drop the whole, <laughs> unless there's a little enclosure that falls off the yeah, desk or something like that. If there's an enclosure that takes a spill or a lightning strike that smokes everything, I mean, mm -hmm. it does happen. And those recoveries are even more expensive because we're going to have to resurrect every single drive. So it's not like we're saying that every single RAID Zero is going to cost this, but you know uh, the way that we always do this stuff here at Gilware is we evaluate the situation for free. We perform a, a free feasibility study. Greg's team will assess the damage, figure out, project manpower or, or engineering power, and figure out hard drive repair costs or SSD repair costs, clean room bench time, imaging time, and we put together a bid. And if that bid makes sense for you, awesome. And if it doesn't, uh, then we can just send you your equipment back. So we're here to help, uh, hopefully. Uh, and, and the best way to get a quote is just to call a specialist. So when you pick up the phone, describe the situation, that's going to do a better job than this video of kind of giving you a price range that makes sense for your situation. And, and the recovery advisor team is there to, to always try to give you the best idea possible where this is. So you can make that decision of whether or not to, to send it in to us. So thanks a bunch.